Now, when we're looking at brain integration therapy, we're looking at organizing the brain in three different ways. The first way we're going to look at brain integration is from left to right or lateral integration. You can see from the picture where it says the corpus callosum. Is it a bridge or is it a barrier? The left side of the brain is more black and white writing. The right side of the brain has a lot of color and shapes and objects. That corpus callosum is the bridge, as it were, in between those two hemispheres. And what we know about women physiologically is that our corpus callosum is a little thicker than men, and so that gives more surface area for the electrical conductivity to cross. And so you get a lot more talking left to right brain in women than you do typically for men. The left brain, as you can see, is more responsible for conscious control, words and phonics, logic, math and numbers, groups, categories. It's a very logical, linear side. The right brain, as you can see, is going to be more automatic movement, rhythm, shapes, emotions, daydreaming. We really need both sides of the brain to be able to do reading, writing, and arithmetic really well. Now we're going to talk about back to front integration and what that looks like. The back part of your brain, as you can see from this picture, is responsible for being like the hard drive of your brain. It stores information that you have. The middle part of your brain, or as you can see from the picture, those parietal lobes, go back and retrieve that information that you need and then move it to the frontal part of your brain where you can then synthesize or express what you've learned and recalled. What's interesting about the frontal lobe is that that really takes place in terms of development during adolescence. The first period of time that we see a lot of growth and development happen is from zero to three. We all know that babies learn a lot and their brains just overproduce and go crazy. And then the brain kind of prunes back and gets rid of some of the things they don't need. And then, and when they become an adolescent, from about nine to 24, what we find is there's an overproduction of brain growth happening in that prefrontal cortex. We call it prefrontal cortex lobe maturation. What it means is that they're learning to grow and learn in maturity, and being able to synthesize information and think rationally. And also it has to do with morality, judgment, and motivation. Now we're going to talk about the third way that the brain organizes, and that's from bottom to top. This is one of my favorite ways that the brain organizes. And if you look at the picture here, what you're going to notice at the bottom is that we have the instinctive brain, which helps our body just to do what it needs to do on a daily basis, the heart to beat for me to breathe without having to think about it. Then we move up into the subconscious brain, which is the dreaming that we have and things that we do subconsciously that we don't even realize why. And then we move up into the emotional brain, which is the limbic system. And this is wonderful because this is these major drives that help us have joy and love and fear. And it's a great place. But if we live in emotional brain, if we live in our limbic system and we're stuck there, then we might be a knee-jerk reactor. We don't want to live stuck in one area of our brain. The goal is to be integrated, to be able to move up and down easily. As you can see, the arrows go both ways on the picture. And then the neat thing to know about that emotional brain is that if you're a male, that a lot of times male, men, because of the hormones that they have, the testosterone and those fear, the cortisol, those fear hormones, when their brain and their limbic system is washed with those hormones, what we find is that it can be difficult for them to get up into rational brain for a little while. And so we have to reboot the system as it were, kind of like what you would do with a computer. If I'm working on my computer and my computer gets stuck, if I just keep pressing buttons over and over, what happens? The computer freezes, right? We need to reboot the computer and let it start fresh. Well, the same thing happens when a guy gets stuck in anger and their limbic system gets washed with all those hormones. For them to get immediately into a rational discussion can be really difficult. The quickest way to get your son out of his emotional brain is to let him get some physical activity done very quickly. Getting on a trampoline or doing some form of exercise will get him back into rational brain within 15 minutes. It's a great little tip that I've learned that's helped me a lot with my son. I also know that the emotional brain is interesting from the standpoint for men and that men can take 12 hours to process emotionally complex thoughts. If I have something emotionally hot that I want to talk to my husband about, it's better for me to give him 
a heads up and say, hey, when we have our date night on Saturday, can we talk about X, Y, and Z? And then we can talk and give him some time to have process so that he doesn't get right back into his base in basic instinct brain, that fight flight mode because he panics and not able to communicate and talk and process. And that I have found to be very helpful. All right, so then the next place that we move up into then is the rational brain. Now, someone who is stuck in rational brain would be, for example, a CEO who can't leave work, who gets stuck in work, someone who can't see your point of view, um, someone that we might think of as like Spock on Star Trek, someone who would try to say that's illogical and try to logic away your emotion. The rational brain is really important for getting and being able to process information. But if we're stuck there, we may not have empathy and see someone else's point of view. And so as you can see with the arrows going both ways, it's important to, have, to be able to go up and down and maybe have the rational brain say, wow, I'm talking to this person right now. My heart rate is, I can feel it beating very fast. I'm, I feel angry and upset, but I don't know why. And then maybe think, wow, they're kind of pushing some buttons like my fourth grade teacher did who told me I was dumb. And if I can realize that this is not that fourth grade teacher, this person isn't tr intending to cause me harm, then I can get out of that fight flight and use my rational brain to help me calm down and have a good conversation. And so that is, that is again, the goal with integration, is to be able to move up and down easily in that brain organization. We learned a lot about prefrontal cortex lobe maturation in the 1800s during the railroad time when a guy named Phineas Gage was working on the railroad as a supervisor and his co-worker blew up the rock to put in a big nail and the, the nail blew up with the dynamite and actually went through the frontal lobe of Phineas Gage. Kind of scary, but what's amazing is that he then lived for another 11 years. He died of unrelated things years later. But what they noted at that time is that Phineas Gage had started out to be a very gregarious, happy-go-lucky guy, and he was a really good supervisor. He was very responsible, and he showed up to work. After the injury, what they found out was that he became very erratic in his behavior and quite irritable. Sometimes he'd show up to work, and sometimes not. And that's kind of a story that a lot of people like to hear because that's when they started learning that the brain, different parts of the brain had to do with different, had different roles and responsibilities. The frontal lobe then, what we learn is that that's what helps us have morality, motivation, judgment. Uh, it makes you who you are. And so if you've known someone that's had a head injury or had a stroke in that area, a lot of times you'll hear people say they're just not the same person. They're completely different. They might have what we call a very flat affect where they're not very excited or perky. Um, and so that frontal lobe development is really key for adolescents, especially between the ages of 9 to 24.